Eugenio Salazar was part of the Lincoln County Regulators during the Lincoln County War. While some sources label him as the youngest member of the group, this claim is likely incorrect. The mistake of recording his birth date wrongly on his tombstone is a key reason for this confusion. Additionally, many mentions of Eugenio Salazar as the young Salazar suggest he was one of the youngest. However, despite being youthful, he was likely older than his pal Billy the Kid. Salazar likely came into the world on February 14, 1858, or possibly in 1857, in Valencia County, New Mexico. The 1860 census of Valencia County indicates that he was two years old at the time, residing in the Cuara and Sienga area as the son of Teófilo and Paula, Paula Salazar. It appears that Eugenio's father Teófilo passed away, and his mother remarried before 1880. In the 1880 census of Las Tablas, Lincoln County, Eugenio is recorded as a stepson in the household of Francisco and Paula Luma, alongside his brothers Romulo and Jose, who were also listed in the 1860 Valencia County Census. By 1880, the older siblings had either passed away or moved out of the household. Eugenio spent his formative years along the Hondo River, but his family later moved a few miles west to Lincoln. From a young age, he picked up the skill of playing the fiddle and was even hired to perform at a dance held at Fort Stanton, earning $50 for his efforts. Additionally, Eugenio developed proficiency in horseback riding and became adept with both rifle and pistol. Eugenio crossed paths with Billy the Kid, whom he admired as a role model. His involvement in the Lincoln County War was limited to the five-day battle, where he was one of the 14 regulators holed up inside the McSween house. During the chaotic retreat from the burning building, Eugenio sustained gunshot wounds to his back and shoulder. To avoid further harm, he played dead until he could crawl to safety at his sister-in-law's home, located about a half mile from Lincoln. There he received medical treatment from Dr. Dan Appel of Fort Stanton. Eugenio eventually turned his life around, becoming an honest rancher. Following Billy the Kid's dramatic escape from jail in Lincoln, where he fatally shot two guards, he sought refuge at Eugenio's residence. Salazar provided him with sustenance while Billy camped nearby. Eugenio Salazar likely wed Isabel in Lincoln County sometime between 1896 and 1898. He was her second husband, and it's uncertain if they had any children together. Eugenio was proficient in both English and Spanish, with the ability to read and write. Isabel, on the other hand, spoke only Spanish and was illiterate. He remained engaged in farming in Lincoln County until his passing on January 7, 1936. He was laid to rest beside his wife in the Lincoln Cemetery his headstone bearing the inscription Pal of Billy the Kid. Buck English was a notorious outlaw of the American Old West, known for his criminal exploits as one of Lake County, California's most infamous thieves and stagecoach robbers during the late 1800s. Lawrence Buchanan English, born in Oregon, quickly earned the moniker Buck. The English family had a long-standing feud with the Durbans, resulting in the deaths of three of Buck's brothers. At the age of 13, Buck felt compelled to seek revenge against the Durbin family. Unlike Black Bart, another infamous thief of Lake County, Buck was impulsive and openly displayed his excessive confidence. At just 22 years old, he and a partner robbed the Lower Lake stagecoach, seizing the Wells Fargo strongbox from the driver. Instead of the anticipated gold or silver for the miners, the box contained only two brass castings. According to the local newspaper, shortly before this incident, he and his accomplice encountered four Chinese miners descending from the Great Western Mine, near Middletown, and robbed them of their watches and money. Wells Fargo strongboxes were frequently targeted by stagecoach robbers in Middletown. Following the mid-19th century, payroll money was transported via stagecoach with an armed guard alongside the driver. While not all of the robberies in the area were attributed to Buck and his gang, they were a significant menace to the local community for several years. Buck operated along the road near Mountain Hill House, south of Middletown, or in the vicinity of the double bridge north of Middletown near Lower Lake. For two decades, Buck freely roamed the countryside, making little effort to conceal his identity or his illicit activities. Buck strolled through the Middletown streets with a six-shooter holstered at his side, openly challenging anyone who dared to question his dominance. On one occasion, he crossed paths with Captain Good on the main street, leading to a heated exchange of words. Later that day, they encountered each other again, resulting in a gunfight where Buck emerged unharmed while the captain suffered serious injuries to his arm and legs. In a separate incident, Buck fatally shot a man at the Middletown skating rink, causing chaos and panic in the venue. 
After getting out of San Quentin in 1882, Buck came back to Middletown. Shortly after he got back, the Labrie store in town got robbed of some watches and jewelry. Buck left Middletown for a while, but when he came back, it was clear he hadn't changed. It didn't take long before he stopped a stagecoach at the base of Mount St. Helena, close to the summer home of San Francisco's mayor. He ordered the six passengers out of the stagecoach and took all their belongings. Buck didn't bother hiding who he was. He even greeted the driver of a passing wagon who quickly realized what was happening and sped away. On May 7, 1895, a posse gathered to capture Buck after the robbery. They found him on a stagecoach heading from Monticello to Napa, sparking a wild chase. The following day, San Francisco Examiner carried the report. One of the robbers jumped onto the horses in front and pointed his guns. He brandished his weapons and shouted curses, threatening to shoot the driver. Both robbers wielded old-style Colt revolvers and cursed at everyone, particularly the Chinese passengers. Sheriff Bell's capture of Buck resembles a scene straight out of a Wild West tale. Buck sustained severe injuries and bled heavily, leading many to doubt his survival. Despite the odds, he eventually recovered, only to be sent back to San Quentin to serve another sentence. Buck may not have had the same level of fame as Black Bart and other notorious gunmen of the era, but his presence instilled fear wherever he roamed. Despite being apprehended for his robberies and assaults on civilians, Buck was involved in a multitude of other illegal ventures, including cattle theft, for which he spent less than a year behind bars. Buck lived long enough to taste freedom once more after his prison release. He passed away in San Francisco on January 15, 1915, from natural causes, unlike his brothers, all of whom met violent ends.